All right, welcome back. Today I'm going to look at the Noahide laws, but more specifically at this concept of the divine image. It's something they talk a lot about. It seems to be one of the most important things about the Noahide laws and their beliefs. And we're going to take a look at Judaism and some Masonic literature and also some things in modern day popular culture. All right, now here's something by Manley P. Hall called Man, Grand, Symbol of the Mysteries, Thoughts in Occult Anatomy. All right, so basically they think uh, man is a microcosm of the macrocosm that we have to go through a process called uh, alchemy to change our body to be in harmony with the spirit of the universe. And we're going to go to chapter three, the mystery of the three worlds, macrocosm and the microcosm, the great man of the Zohar, the race of the androgynes, the future state of man. What kind of mutation? A transmutation by the mysteries into a celestial nature. All right, the material nature transformed into a spiritual nature. All right, now he quotes Eliphaz Levi, who drew the Baphomet picture. With one hand, the divine image put back the sea, while in the other it raised up continents and mountains. Now this divine image is the same term that the Noahides use. Everyone nowadays is talking about the Noahide laws, and one of their core ideas is that people were created in the divine image. And we're going to see what this divine image actually is. It said, let us make man, and thus man was made. There is nothing so beautiful in the masterpiece of any poet as this vision of creation accomplished by the prototype of humanity. All right, the prototype of humanity. Hereby is man but the shadow of a shadow, and yet he is the image of divine power, the image of divine power. He can also stretch forth his hands from east to west. To him is the earth given as a dominion. Such is Adam Cadmon the primordial Adam of the Kabbalists. Such is the sense in which he is depicted as a giant. And this is why Swedenborg, haunted in his dreams by reminiscences of the Kabbalah, says that entire creation is only a titanic man and that we are made in the image of the universe. So here's androgynous Adam. If you want to transvestigate Adam a little bit, according to the Kabbalah, you will notice the Zionist flag. Pyramid pointing up is male, pyramid pointing down is female. Combined, it's the divine androgyne, the perfect man. All right, here's the Noahides. The androgynous symbol here, the two triangles, one up, one down. You got the peacock, right? That's the same as the uh, Azoth. And here's the rabbi, the Noahide rabbi, meeting with the United Nations. UN at the UN. Universal Noahide at the United Nations. That's their slogan. Insights into the Noahide laws through the light of Torah and Chabad philosophy. Well, it should be Kabbalah or Talmud. Every person is created with a divine image. The worlds of the spiritual and the physical are not in conflict. Their ultimate purpose is that they be fused together with the physical being permeated by the spiritual. All right, that's alchemy. A wonderful harmony. Achieving both in the individual and in the world at large, man is a microcosm of the macrocosm. This imitation can only take place through the performance of the divinely given Noahide commandments. Oh, really? How come these Noahide commandments are not in the Bible at all then? You know what I'm saying? Now, this is a book called The Symbolism of Freemasonry, Illustrating and Explaining Its Science and Philosophy, Its Legends, Myths, and Symbols by Albert Mackey. All right, he's another one of these 33rd degree Masons. 1869, he says that Freemasons are Noahides. It's the same thing. Noahide, okay, or Noahide. The descendants of Noah and the transmitters of his religious dogmas which were the unity of God, which means the androgyny of God, and the immortality of the soul. The name has from its earliest times been bestowed upon the Freemasons who teach the same doctrines. It tells you right there. The Freemasons who teach the same doctrines as who? As the Noahides. It is all the same thing. It goes back to the ancient mystery religions, the pre-flood 
Nephilim kingdom, all right? This is the religion that the fallen angels taught to humans, all right? And the religion itself, I believe, was uh, passed through the flood by means of Ham, Noah's son, not Noah himself. Noah was righteous, but his son Ham was a bit of a rebel, all right? Thus, in the old charges, as quoted by Anderson, it is said, a mason is obliged by his tenure to observe the moral law as a true Noah kaide. So, it's Freemasonry, as the Freemasons themselves admit. And here's the Tetragrammaton, four letters, the four-lettered name of God in the Hebrew language, which consisted of four letters, commonly but incorrectly pronounced Yehovah. As a symbol, it greatly pervaded the rites of antiquities and was perhaps the earliest symbol corrupted by the spurious Freemasonry of the pagan mysteries. Kabbalistically read and pronounced, it means the male and female principle of nature, the generative and prolific energy of creation. Here we have again the widely spread symbolism of the phallus and the yoni, or their equivalent, the point within a circle, and another pregnant proof of the connection between Freemasonry and the ancient mysteries. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them, plural pronoun, they could not have been in the image of I-O if they had not been male and female. The Torah or Bible begins with the creation of man in the book of Genesis. When Adam was created in the divine image, the rabbis teach us that Adam was the prototype. Same exact word found in Masonic literature. An example for each and every individual to follow. One person is equivalent to an entire world. These laws, the seven Noahide laws, are the basic possession of humanity, for the human being is, to use the biblical phrase, created in the image of God. That is to say, fitted to imitate God, and this imitation can take place only through the performance of the divinely given Noahide commandments. So basically what this means, translated, it means we must become androgynes to perfectly imitate the androgynous God. In the first marriage ever, Adam and Eve were initially created as a single two-faced body. So right here on the Noahide website, they say Adam, the first human, was a single two-faced body in androgyne, all right? And they call that a marriage, a chemical wedding in alchemy. The single being was split in two, a man and a woman, and then reunited in matrimony. In the world of souls, the partition and reunification of the male and the female components of individual souls occurs continually. The male and female components of individual souls, all right? It's talking about one person who has both male and female components. The partition and reunification, where did we see that? Dissolve and coagulate. It's the Baphomet right here. Solve coagula. The partition and reunification of the male and female components of individual souls occurs continually. This is describing the Baphomet, an individual person reuniting their male and female components. All right, this is from Chabad.org. Now, this is not from some ancient piece of literature, all right? This is just a regular website for normal, everyday Jewish people. Marriage. And God created man in his image. In the divine image, he created him, male and female, he created them. Thus, the Torah describes the creation of man. Implicit in this description is the fact that at creation, male and female were one entity. Obviously, male and female, he created them. Well, no, because as I've said many times, them is a plural pronoun talking about more than one person. And in this case, in context, the only logical explanation, he's talking about Adam as the male and Eve as the female. Therefore, you use the word them, but they're trying to change the definition of this word them. They're getting rid of words like he and him. They're going to replace it with them. A single individual with two faces. Aha. Uh -huh. And alchemical symbolism. Two hermaphrodites. 16th century and later. Regeneration and rejuvenation. Dissolving and coagulating. The Antichrist or Luciferic hermaphrodite and the mercurial hermaphrodite. Well, there's two types, antichrist, mercurial, mercury. It's the same thing though, right? You got the two heads, male, female head, and you got this dragon, the wings, right? You got the winged entities, the dragon, dragon, the wings, the sun on top, the, the light, 
dragon wings, hermaphrodite. It's the same thing. The God man, the man has become God again. All right, so that's the goal right here. And look between the legs there. There's not a whole lot going on. It's achieved equilibrium. All right, so that's the great work. That's the philosopher's stone. That's androgynous alchemy. That's our job, according to Kabbalistic Judaism, Freemasonry, is to change ourselves back into the image of God, back into the divine image. The Noahide laws will focus on changing humanity into the divine image, as well as the Equality Act, which is really the Equilibrium Act, or the Androgyny Act. All right, they're creating laws to turn us into this guy right here that you see in front of you. We can all live in Westworld. These three photos right here, these are all the same thing, right? They all represent the same thing. For some reason, I don't know why, I looked into Marilyn Manson a bit more and I came across this article. Manson expands on Adam concept for new LP. Marilyn Manson will emerge from his self-imposed exile for the release of his new album, Holy Wood, in the shadow of the Valley of Death. And he has revised the record's track listing to reflect his fascination with Adam, the biblical first man. This is the final album of a trilogy. So Antichrist Superstar is the first album in the trilogy, followed by Mechanical Animals and then Holy Wood. It's three albums that are talking about Adam. The full track listing, which has now been divided into four acts or movements. We'll see those in a minute. Adding that he would assume the symbol for the planet Mercury as his new guise. At that time, Manson noted that the Mercury symbol is most commonly used in alchemy. It represents both the androgyne and the prima materia, which has been associated with Adam, the first man. And all these things are major influences into the writing of the new album. Now look at the uh, four movements here. So it's A-D-A-M, right? Four movements that spell out Adam. A in the shadow, four songs. D, the androgyne. And you got uh, a few more songs. So this whole album called Holy Wood is about the Kabbalah, Judaism, androgynous Adam, right? I mean, he's telling us right here. The central character is the protagonist, Adam Kadmon, a name derived from the Kabbalah, which means original man. Now, I didn't know any of this. I think I went to uh, one of his concerts on this actual tour, and I had no idea that those three albums were about androgynous Adam. And at that concert, he, talked, he gave a story about having sex with a transsexual, and he simulated it on stage. <laughs> so I guess now it makes a bit of sense, because that's what the album's about. Right here, D, the androgyne. Now, what's his prima materia? In alchemy, prima materia is the ubiquitous starting material required for the alchemical magnum opus. Oh, look at the symbol. The circle, the triangle, the square, and the circle. Okay, remember that square and the circle. We're going to see that in a minute. But you see this everywhere, right? The great work is an alchemical term for the process of working with the prima materia to create the philosopher's stone. All right, that's the androgyne. It has been used to describe personal and spiritual transmutation, the X-Men. Uh-huh. Separation, conjunction. That's on the Baphomet. Dissolve and coagulate. That's a summary of the alchemical recipe to create the androgyne. Separate. We're separated, and then we will unite, come back together. Harry Potter series right there. Philosopher's Stone, history goes back to Adam who acquired the knowledge of the stone directly from God. That's the Kabbalah right here. This is the secret teachings of the rabbis right here. And I believe I've shown before how in the writings of Manly P. Hall, he does say specifically um, the Philosopher's Stone represents the androgyne, all right, the original Adam. So you got Antichrist Superstar, you got symbols like this, the wings, and something's happened to his genitals here. He seems to have turned himself into an androgyne or something. I don't know. All right, and then he had mechanical animals with the androgyne. The image represents how I see myself and how I think the world sees me in a lot of ways. Androgynous and sexless at the same time. That's kind of the vulnerable way I see myself on this record. Marilyn Manson, direct quote. So... 
Don't take it from me. He says himself that he is androgynous. He's admitted to being an androgyne. All right. The infamous photo depicts Manson as an androgynous naked figure with breasts, six fingers, and airbrushed genitalia. Contrary to popular internet rumors, the band leader Manson did not undergo any plastic surgery for this androgynous alien look. That's just how he looks naturally. The album Holy Wood. Here's some artwork associated with this. I guess this would have came inside of the uh, CD or something. The devil. It's like a tarot card. The devil. Here you got the uh, pentagram, upside down pentagram. You got the goat. It's the Baphomet. Now he's doing the peace sign, right? There's different theories what it actually means, but it basically, it's an androgyne sign. This is from Antichrist Superstar. So again, you got the Adam Catmone figure there as the Antichrist hermaphrodite. Remember that you got the circle and the square, right? And inside of that, you got the figure of a human with wings. In fact, it's got uh, six sets of wings, it looks like. And there's Westworld, same thing, right? Same exact thing, the circle. And ironically enough, Marilyn Manson dated the star of Westworld, named Evan, all right? How many women do you know named Evan? Now, maybe some women get that name. I don't know of any. I know some guys named Evan, though. Evan Rachel Wood, Holy Wood, Evan Wood. So Westworld is about the same thing. It's about alchemy. It's about the transformation of humans into androgynes. It's about the androgynous queen of heaven. So right now I'm making like five different videos at the same time, and they're all talking about Masonic literature, mass media, exoteric and esoteric meanings, truth hiding in plain sight, hidden codes, symbols. If you don't understand this video, watch the previous video or the video after it, because uh, these videos I'm making here in the month of May 2019, I think they're all kind of interrelated. We've been kind of, uh, you know, deceived our entire life, so we're starting to lift the veil and, and see what's really going on here. So that's uh, what I'm trying to do here on my channel. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hang in there, and uh, see you next time.